Hey Summoners, how's it going? My name is Nathan Ng and I'll be your host for this video. We'll be covering the upcoming changes for patch 12.16, so make sure you stay tuned. I'll cover all the changes that we know about, and it's also worth mentioning that this is the first of world's focused patches. In other words, these are going to be aimed at more competitive play, so don't be surprised if you see some changes that seem a little bit out of the ordinary. While these changes are still tentative, we almost always see them make it through, so it's worth noting that some last minute changes and tweaks can happen. That being said, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on future content like this, and let's get started. To start off the video, we'll run you guys through what's most important to everybody, the skins. Strike Commander Camille, Cyber Halo Janna, a prestige edition of the skin, Strike Paladin Lucian, and Armored Titan Nasus are currently on the PBE. You can expect these new skins to join the shop next patch and like always, if you want a preview, you can hop into the test server for yourself or do some web searching for them. For you sci-fi fans, you definitely need to check these out. That covered, let's talk about the balance changes next. We'll begin with the single system change that we have coming up. Even Shroud is set to receive a buff next patch. The damage amplification will also have its value increased by 1%, while the duration of the buff will be increased by 1 second. Don't take this buff for granted, as it amplifies the damage of the owner's entire team, not just a single ally. While the item received a big nerf in patch at 11.24, it's getting some of that power back. Not only will it have a little more kill power during the laning phase, it can easily be the difference between a won or a lost teamfight moving forward. This should, overall, take some power away from the enchanters and give it back to aggressive supports who need to rack up takedowns early and have a meaningful impact. With the system changes covered, we'll move on to the champion changes next. Beginning with the top lane, we have a small buff coming up for Irelia. If you're sick and tired of getting destroyed by her, I'll at least let you know that this is a defensive buff coming up. So you won't get bursted down any faster by fed enemy Irelia, but she is certainly going to be harder to kill. Next patch, Irelia will receive buffs to her armor per level as well as base MR. These changes might even make her more popular of a pick in the mid lane, so definitely be on the lookout for that. Another top lane buff coming our way next patch is for Jace. He's received some buffs to help him scrap in melee range and also have some increased armor and increased damage ratios on his hammer form Q and passive. This should make it a little more rewarding than before for players who dive in and go crazy when the time is right. Next is a buff for Malphite. It's a pretty big one too, though it may not look like it. His passive's early cooldown will be reduced by 2 seconds and his W's cooldown will now scale with ability rank. The former rank is a huge buff to Malphite's landing phase as he'll have a lot more shielding to work with. As a result, it'll be way more difficult to trade against him overall. He should be able to pick up more farm in harder matchups and instead use that shield to win favorable matchups even harder than before. Lowering the cooldown on his W isn't the biggest deal, but it can certainly come in handy in the late game, especially once Malphite has built some ability haste to back it up. That's actually it for the top lane, only buffs in sight for now. The patch is actually very bottom lane heavy, but we do have a few more changes to go over before we move on to those. While it may seem strange, we have a small nerf for Poppy Jungle. She is deemed too powerful and I think the real issue for high level players is that her flex pick potential is oppressive. It won't be impossible to jungle with her moving forward, but it'll prove to be a lot more challenging than before as her Q's damage cap against monsters will be lowered next patch. A reduced clear speed is a gigantic hindrance to any jungler, but she remains an extremely valuable asset to any team because of her immense utility. Before moving forward, I want to shout out our coaches at ProGuides.com. They've helped countless students rank up and achieve their goals. If you're interested in becoming a better player or improving fast, we have a specialist for all roles and champions, so make sure you check out our site. Now, let's continue on with the video. The last jungle change is an adjustment definitely worth mentioning. It's going to be for Diana, and of course, this is also going to affect her as a mid laner. Diana's passive damage is going to be adjusted to favor AP heavy builds. The base damage at later levels will be reduced, while the AP ratio will be increased. She's also going to receive a buff to her ease AP ratio. Tankier builds on Diana are currently a little bit too powerful, as she's able to destroy her enemy carries with very low risk. Once again, we're running into the issue that makes the game hard to enjoy for many players, a tanky assassin that deals a ridiculous amount of damage. With this adjustment, we'll hopefully see less players take advantage of her new build, and instead see more high-risk, high-reward one-shot itemization instead. That covers the jungle. Next, let's talk about the mid lane. For the mid lane, we have buffs coming up for Zoe. Her W's drop rate for minions and her E's damage will be raised next patch. It's going to be about a 2% increase in drop rate, which can certainly make a huge difference, especially since it already feels like a huge game of chance against her. The odds have been raised slightly in her favor for next patch. Now we have to cover the majority of the next patch's changes with the bottom lane. A lot is expected to change in the next patch, so let's start with the buffs. Tristana's bonus attack speed from her Q will be increased at all ranks. It's a 15% buff, which is certainly something that can't be ignored at any point in the game. This is still a pretty big buff early on as it'll make it easier for players to detonate her bomb when they're committing to an extended fight. Overall, it's obviously an increase in damage output as well. Next for buffs is Caitlyn, and I think she's received a pretty interesting one. Her passive's AD scaling will increase at later levels, but more importantly, her ultimate will deal up to 25% bonus damage based on crit chance. 
The intent here is to have a buff for Caitlyn without encouraging players to opt in for a non-interactive lethality build. Instead, a standard crit build will take advantage of this buff as she'll be able to utilize a passive buff with attack speed as well as the ultimate buff with the crit chance. Although it does encourage a more universal build with less variety, all Caitlyn players should benefit from this change since her passive will be stronger with any viable build. Since we're close to finishing out the video, I also want to take a quick second to ask you a question of the day. If you were to force to swap roles right now, which one would you pick? As things are right now, I'd probably swap to jungle. Playing ADC doesn't seem very fun. Let me know your answers in the comment section down below. Kai'Sa will also receive a buff in Worlds fashion. Her passive damage, Q AP ratio, and ultimate AP ratio are all going to receive buffs. It's definitely going to help AP Kai'Sa a ton. One thing that sticks out to me is that her ultimate's AP ratio will be increased by 30%. Now that's a durability buff if I've ever seen one. Diving AP Kai'Sa will be much harder, and of course, her damage output is also set to receive a moderate increase as well. This might even bring Kai'Sa mid back into the spotlight. Moving on to the nerfs, our first one here is for Zeri. Her W's AP ratio and Q's AD ratio will be lowered. The reduced scaling will make her a less appealing pick, but overall, she isn't losing much power in the laning phase. Her Q's AD ratio is only going to be reduced by 5%, so while it is a loss of damage, the nerfs won't feel super noticeable until the mid game. Another upcoming nerf is for Draven. His Q's base damage will be reduced by 5 at all ranks, which is a particularly big nerf early on. While juggling two axes, Draven is a massive threat to his opponents because of his raw damage output. The loss of 5 damage is going to apply to almost every basic attack that he throws out while trading. Thus, he won't poke his enemies as hard and also won't be as threatening in an all-in situation. As Draven relies on early kills to carry his games, I consider this a pretty big nerf. That's it for the bottom lane changes, so let's conclude the video with some support changes. First, Zyra is receiving some buffs next patch. Her E's post lockout will be changed to a consistent 0.15 seconds rather than varying from 0.15 to 0.4 seconds. If you're confused by what that means, Zyra will be actionable faster than before while casting her E. Thus, she feels more smooth and gains more mobility, which makes it harder to lock her down. At the moment, you can try to predict that she'll throw her root out and then time her own ability at the same time. With the reduced lockout, the risk Zyra has to take in order to throw out an ability is significantly lower than before. Finally, the last change that we'll cover is a nerf for Yumi. Thank goodness, I genuinely hate this champion so much. Her E's movement speed will have its AP ratio lowered. In addition, the cooldown and higher ranks will be increased. This is a significant nerf as the movement speed ratio is being lowered by 4% per 100 AP. The additional cooldown increase will also help this nerf sink in, and I'm certain that she'll see a noticeable drop in her win rate and play rate next patch because of this change. That being said, we've concluded our upcoming changes for patch 12.16. Hope you guys all enjoyed the video, and like always, feel free to let us know what you guys thought about it in the comment section down below. You can also expand the description if you're interested in joining our Discord community, where you can be the first to learn about any events or giveaways that we host in the future. With all that being said, everybody, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.